Hi there and welcome to this day in history for July 12th. July 12th is the 193rd day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 184th in leap years, with 172 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is ordekamba. Ordekamba can be used as an adverb or an adjective and it means out of action, disabled. This comes from French and it means literally out of fight. <laughs> and this is kind of a trick word. We've been talking about horse words recently, words about horses or derived from horses. And this one looks like it probably means combat horse, but this term has nothing to do with horses really. More of a red herring <laughs> to mix another animal metaphor. <laughs> A similar, more common word is ardu, which means outside the main course. And with that, we're going to start with the birthday of Roman politician and general Julius Caesar, born July 12, 100 BC. It seems fairly certain that Caesar had some sort of brain disorder, generally thought to be epilepsy. Some have countered that he may have suffered from hypoglycemia. Other suggestions include a parasitic infection in the brain or cerebrovascular episodes, like many strokes. Whatever the cause, he did exhibit evidence of some sort of medical problem that affected his brain. He was assassinated in 44 BC. He was 55 years old. On July 12, 1543, King Henry VIII of England married his sixth and last wife, Catherine Parr, at Hampton Court Palace. She helped him reconcile with his daughters. That marriage lasted until his death four years later, but she didn't have him killed. He just died because he was in poor health. This is the birthday of American essayist, poet, and philosopher Henry David Thoreau born July 12, 1817. He wrote a lot, but is best known for his book Walden, which is a reflection on simple living in natural surroundings. Thoreau contracted tuberculosis in 1835, and this bothered him off and on after that. He got a pretty tough case of bronchitis in 1860, which really knocked the wind out of his sails, so to speak. Over the next two years, he grew so weak that he became bedridden. In the last weeks of his life, his Aunt Louisa asked him if he'd made peace with God. And he answered, I did not know that we had ever quarreled. Henry David Thoreau died in 1862 at the age of 44. This is the birthday of American businessman George Eastman, founder of Eastman Kodak. Born on July 12, 1854, he lived to the age of 77. This is the birthday of Louis B. Mayer, born July 12, 1884. He was, of course, a co-founder of the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Movie Company. He lived to the age of 73. This is the birthday of American architect and engineer Buckminster Fuller, born July 12, 1895. He was most famous for his lattice shell structure, geodesic domes. You may have seen such a dome around a military radar installation, for example. Brilliant man, Buckminster Fuller. I used to know someone who built geodesic dome buildings, and he would say that you could heat it with a match or cool it with an ice cube. <laughs> I never actually lived in one, though, so I don't know that for sure. They're interesting buildings, though, sure enough. Buckminster Fuller lived to the age of 87. Looks like July 12, 1895 was a good day for birthdays, as this is also the birthday of American director, producer, and songwriter Oscar Hammerstein II. Of course, he is the Hammerstein of Rodgers and Hammerstein. He co-wrote 850 songs and worked on musicals such as Oklahoma, South Pacific, The King and I, and The Sound of Music. Oscar Hammerstein II lived to the age of 65. This is the birthday of American pianist and composer Van Cliburn, born July 12, 1934. He was born in Louisiana, toured the world playing piano concerts, and settled right here in Fort Worth in a big pretty house just about a mile from where I'm sitting right now. Well, maybe a mile and a half. <laughs> right over there, anyway. Clyburn is the symbol of talent and inspiration to many young pianists, and he lived to the age of 78. 
There was a time that anyone would have been quite tickled to share a birthday with Bill Cosby. He sure was a funny man when he was funny. But then we learned he had a shadow side, a sinister secret side. That said, this is the birthday of comedian Bill Cosby, born July 12, 1937. President Dwight D. Eisenhower became the first president to ride in a helicopter on July 12, 1957. The Rolling Stones performed their first concert at London's Marquee Club on July 12, 1962. On July 12, 1984, Democratic presidential candidate Walter Mondale announced his choice for Vice President Geraldine Ferraro. Today's song is In the Year 2525 by Zegger and Evans. This hit number one on July 12, 1969. If you've never heard of Zegger and Evans, that would most likely be because this was their only charting single, making them a one-hit wonder. Not to say that they didn't make other music, this was just the only one that made it to the charts and them the only recording artist ever to have a chart-topping number one hit on both sides of the Atlantic and never have another Billboard charting single in the US or UK for the rest of their career. This song was recorded primarily in one take in 1968 in Odessa, Texas of all places and released in April of 1969. It begins with the year 2525 and it goes millennia by millennia describing how things might be going forward under the premise that humankind will continue to become more sedentary and rely even more on automation and technology, eventually resulting in our extinction. Please don't let that happen. The music is played in minor notes to enhance the dystopian feel. In the year 2525 is not my favorite, but apparently a lot of people really liked it a lot because it hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and held that spot for six weeks beginning July 12th, 1969. I must say I was surprised to learn that this song has been covered by at least 60 other artists and in seven languages. Other of interest to note is that 2525 was included in a list of songs that were considered lyrically questionable after the September 11 attacks. The song has also been mentioned in other songs, movies, and television shows. In the year 2525 by Zegger and Evans, number one, July 12, 1969. Link in the description. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page that is called no really <laughs> you can also find me on rumble parlor bitshoot and gitter all those links in that description Alrighty, that's all i can think of right now thanks again and i'll see you next time